Welcome to Amazon Legends, where we have real stories about making it big on Amazon. Our guests are CEOs of large companies and entrepreneurs who became power sellers. Also providers specializing in helping sellers, aggregators that acquire sellers, and former Amazonians will give us an insight from behind the scenes. Here is your host, Nick Urison. Welcome to another episode of Amazon Legends. Uh, my next guest today used to be a banker and he turned Amazon seller, but realized that he actually likes helping sellers more than being a seller, which, you know, I can identify with because uh, I used to be a seller. Yeah, you know, it was an experiment for me to figure out, you know, how to use data. So uh, I can totally identify with how he was feeling. So today he's the founder and CEO of Expert CPG, which is a full service Amazon agency for brands that are in food and beverage space. And when he's not working, he's got his hands full with three kids, two girls and a one year old son. And he's a volunteer firefighter. So I don't know how he finds time with three kids <laughs> and firefighting and selling. And uh, so with that, everybody, meet my guest, Ryan Flynn. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Awesome, Nick. Thanks for having me. Super excited to be here. Thank you. All right. And thank you for putting your life at risk. You know, when you're not working, <laughs> being a firefighter, I have a soft spot for firefighters. You know why? Why is because that? Because back in 1997, I launched an online store platform when uh -huh. there was not much online sales. So this gentleman who was a retired firefighter, uh, New York, New York city firefighter, yeah. he retired, he got injured on the job and he retired and uh, he loved the work so much that he wanted to stay connected. So what he did, he started a business putting FDNY on T-shirts and merchandise. Oh, wow. And, and selling it. So he became, and he came to me, he's an Italian-American. He's your typical, typical salt of the earth kind of guy. Yeah. And we became friends and I started helping him out. He was a senior gentleman. So anyway, come 9-11. Three weeks after 9-11, he calls me up one day and he says, Nick, can I ask you for a favor? I said, sure. His name is Joe. I said, sure, Joe, what is it? And he says, I've got so many emails. I don't know how to deal with it. Is there like a quick way, the short way? And I said, Joe, I don't know. What are the emails about? He says, well, it's, it's all receipts. I said, hmm. what receipts? He says, order receipts. Because our system sends out a... a an email. Yeah, receipt, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. So I said, so these are orders. I said, you talk to me about orders. He says, yeah, the orders. I said, how many? So in three weeks, he got 2000 orders. Wow. Yeah. And I said, Joe, your problem is not emails. Your problem is orders. How are you going to ship them? He says, oh, it's okay. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm going to get it shipped. And I said, Joe, they won't release your money. He says, what do you mean? I said, your credit card, you've never sold so much. They will hold on to the funds. So anyway, from that point on, I kind of took him under my, my wing, so to speak, uh, for his business. I arranged a PR company to come interview him. He ended up on Associated Press Wire. He got picked wow. up by CBS, NBC, ABC. Wow. Went, I, I made him famous. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's a great story. I mean, a lot of firefighters have different, you know, jobs and things. And career firefighters, obviously, I'm just a volunteer. But like, uh, yeah, it's a. I mean, I can't imagine what business was like for him after that point, right? Yeah, he was really feeling, and of course, the number three forty three was a big deal because, yeah. you know, I I I got to know some of the guys, and I got to know him, of course, more intimately. To this day, we talk. And, uh, you know, he's a great, great guy. Uh, he writes books. You know, he's a great guy. So, anyway, uh, today we are going to talk about Amazon Mobile. So, you don't want to miss a minute of this. So, 
tell us, um, Ryan, why is Amazon Mobile so important in terms of how to approach it? What are some things that need special attention? Yeah, no, great, great question. Yeah, I'm glad, happy to talk about this because it's really a big focus we've had recently at Expert CPG of of helping our clients with and looking at things through the lens of the customer, right? And so um, that's that's where we'll start the conversation. Maybe is just through the lens of the customer and like that's where the customer's at on mobile. Um, and so there's a lot of different things how listings are displayed and whether it's search and obviously you know sponsored spots uh, on the SERP page, right? Uh, and advertising. Uh, there's certain things with different times of content being displayed and how you want to optimize those. Uh, the way variations are shown, uh, those are actually shown a little differently in the mobile SERP as well. And then obviously you can leverage A plus with, uh, you know, doing mobile only A plus, and then obviously looking at the data and, and different types of not only the data of maybe your mobile traffic and things like that, but also um, and how you can kind of exploit that and maybe um, really modify and improve your listings so they're very mobile friendly. Okay. So there are different areas that need special attention. So what I've just heard you mention is, first of all, how you approach search and advertising, right? So the, when you mentioned the sponsored listing, so you have to you have to think about it from mobile standpoint in terms of your PPC campaigns as well as how your search will appear, and and you mentioned the content. Uh, content yep. has to be according to mobile and you mentioned a plus because a plus appears different in mobile and uh, and the data which is the most important right we are going to get into this so in our show we always want to bring up things and discuss in a way that people who are listening can immediately apply yeah. and then make an impact to their operation so it's going to be actionable and it does not get any more actionable than dealing with Amazon mobile because that's 50%. Usually, you know, the ballpark is 50% of the business comes from mobile. Okay. So let's jump right in. So let's get into the search and advertising. So uh, what can you share with us? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and just to kind of echo what you were saying, Nick, and, and take a step back and look at the whole thing of Amazon mobile, right? It's like, um, I think is, you know, definitely as an agency owner and, and our team and even our clients and, and you know yourself yourself and anybody right whoever's a seller they all we all look at getting stuck at kind of looking at our amazon listings on our computer right whether we've got a i've got a big wide monitor here i'm looking at myself right or you you're on your laptop or you know you're you're always kind of used to kind of looking at things just on on your computer right and obviously um, as you mentioned, you mentioned 50%. The data typically shows 60 plus percent is actually on mobile now. It depends on the category, obviously, and the, the type of product it is, right? Um, and, and the price point. But um, about 60 plus percent is what we see of purchases happen on mobile. So more than half. And, mo and, all, and everybody's looking at these listings on a desktop, right? And thinking, oh, my images look great. My copy looks great. But um, none of that really matters if most of your customers, well, it does matter, but none of your, it, it matters more if your customers are viewing that um, on a phone, right? Whether it's uh, most people using the Amazon app or even the Amazon mobile browser, right? It's kind of renders the same way. So the biggest thing I would say that, you know, we've started to do and get a first piece of actionable advice, I think that would be great for the your listeners to take is just really examine your listings on, on mobile, right? So obviously a couple of different ways you can do that. The easiest and, and simplest is just pulling up the Amazon app yourself and looking at things to the SERP and things like that and in your listings, scrolling through all the way, all the way to the bottom. Obviously, listings seem long on desktop uh, as far as like the length of the page, but they seem super long on mobile sometimes, right? So looking at every piece of that, but we'll talk more about the content here in a minute. But like uh, another way to do that, there's some uh, you can obviously can emulate Chrome or your your browser to show a a mobile version of a page sometimes, so changing the agent and such using the developer tools. And there's different, you know, you can YouTube that and figure out how to do that if you don't. There's also some Chrome extensions that actually allow you to click a button and whatever page you're on, it's going to instantly put that in a mobile browser view, which is fantastic. Uh, it's what we use a lot. Um, and and we just will simply look at, okay, let's look at the page on desktop or the SERP on desktop. Let's go to mobile. And obviously then it, it renders completely different. So that'd be the first thing I, I talk about, right? Is just making sure that you're, you know, if you're going to examine your listings um, for, obviously for mobile, you want to be able to look at it, um, you know, in, in the right way. So 
um, going back to what you were saying with, with search and advertising, right? So that's where we talk about this. We talk about this a lot at Expert CPG is, is looking at it through the customer journey, right? Um, obviously, the data is important, and we'll talk about data and everything like that. But we sometimes, again, forget just to put ourselves in the customer's viewpoint, right? Uh, again, you mentioned I have a few kids, right? And uh, mornings are typically pretty crazy around my house when we're we're trying to get everybody up and fed and you know off to school, and I'm taking the little guy to to daycare and stuff. My wife's off to work and all this, and so the kitchen is like you know just it's it's gonna be absolute chaos sometimes. And sometimes I'm just pulling up, you know, I'm literally like, oh, we're out of X, or I need to find X. I'm literally just pulling up my phone right there, uh, you know, on my the Amazon app, and I need, we need to buy this, and I'm I'm making that purchase decision very quickly. Through the mobile app, right? So think about how the customer, how they interface with, you know, when they search for it, right? So if they're going to search for, hey, you know, we're out of these gluten-free granola bars, let's let's buy some new ones. The kids don't like the last ones we got. So if I'm looking for gluten-free granola bars, right, and I'm going, I'm typing that into the Amazon search on my on the Amazon app, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm only being displayed. You look at talk about let's talk about just the, what you see at the top of the search page, right? On desktop, you're obviously presented with a sponsored brand ad. You've got one to four sponsored product ad slots typically behind that. Uh, but you see somewhat similar to the same. And then you got organic listings, right? And then um, on, on mobile, though, it's somewhat similar, but it's typically um, a sponsored brand ad. And then maybe only one or two sponsored product slots. And then from there, you've got your first organic listing. But the thing is, you, you're not seeing everything on one page. When you're on desktop, your eyes can gravitate towards Oh, I know these are ads, right? We, again, we get trained, especially from being in the Amazon space, maybe the general public, not as much. We get trained to immediately go to that first organic listing, right? With our eyes, we're actually looking to buy something. And I mean, not so much the sponsored. Um, and, but the the end customer, the regular everyday customer, maybe is just buying some gluten-free granola bars. They're actually looking, you know, they're, they're having to scroll down. So they're seeing the sponsored brand ad, and then they're seeing the sponsored product, sponsored product. And then they're seeing their first or two or three organic results on when on their full screen on their on their actual on their actual phone so you know they're all not they're not seeing you know the whole page or they're not seeing 10 or 12 different listings on one screen in front of them so that's where you got to look at uh not only you know own we talk about owning that we talk about owning the page a lot right here is you know you want to own that search page as much as possible obviously it's a lot harder for more generic search terms and more competitive search terms but like your branded search terms like if my kids said hey, oh hey dad definitely buy the Granola bars we bought last time, maybe I threw out the box or whatever it was, or I remember the name, right? And that kind of thing. I can type that name in. I don't want to be, uh, you know, you don't want to have another brand sponsor brand ad there. You, you want to own those sponsored product slots. And we say a lot with brands where they might own uh, one or two or they might own none, none of it, right? Because it's a competitive niche and there's actually, and there's not sophisticated enough to understand like, hey, you need to own this space and pay for, it's more of a defensive strategy. So, you know, it's more important on mobile for sure than it is on on desktop because there's just the limited screen um, real estate space. So this means that really sponsored product listings receive more clicks on mobile than the desktop. W would that be right? I mean, I would, I would argue that, yeah, of course, you know, Amazon is, uh, you know, locks all that data, you know, of course it would be great to give us all the data they have, but I would assume so because just because of, uh, again, and, and again, I'm looking at the same price as your eyes, right? We're trained to know where those sponsor. We just automatically know what's a sponsor, what's not. But the general public, again, they're making a quick decision. They've already presented with a sponsor brand and it's maybe two sponsored products and they're just going to click in that sponsored product right from there. So I think it is much more effective. And we'll talk about the content piece and, and, and how that plays into it here in a minute. But yeah, you definitely want to um, make sure you show up there in those for those search terms. Yeah. Yeah, that would be an interesting study to see which search terms are getting more traffic on mobile. And then you can be bidding on them more aggressively so that you can mm -hmm. dominate. And also what you mentioned about, you know, when you're doing your search, of course, you want to see the if it's not a repeat purchase, but it's the first time purchase, you want to see your search term in the title. And the title has... Yep much, much more limited space, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great segue. Kind of the second thing is, is the content piece, right? So if someone's, if I'm searching for gluten-free granola bars, right. And I start scrolling down, 
you've got to have that little section of that page, right? It's, it's a, you know, it's, it's that little section of SERP there that you have, you've got to maximize that to its fullest. Right. And the two, you know, I would say argue that kind of the four main things that people look at would be, um, you know, the main image, right. And we'll talk about that, uh, the title, and we'll talk about that but also the reviews, which you can, you know, manipulate in the long term, right. Or by having a great product request and reviews, things like that. Um, you can influence that, uh, almost in terms of service, obviously, but then also the price point, right. So kind of looking at all those four main things, right. And the two biggest ones you can influence immediately are the, you know, the main image and the title. So you mentioned the title, right. And we're actually running a test uh, for a client right now. Um, because, you know, Amazon, truncates about the, uh, after about 45, 55 characters, it varies, right? They'll, you won't see the rest of the title on that cert page. So you really got to say the value of your product or like the main search term, right? The, the kind of key search term or key, key keyword that you want to, you know, advertise for putting that in the front 50 characters of that title um, as much as possible, right? Sometimes it's not always possible with, um, you know, the way you want to have your, obviously your product name shown, potentially your brand shown, things like that. But, um, you know, you definitely want to move that to the the first 50 characters so that someone when quickly going down the SERP can see, ah, okay, it does this. It's, it is a gluten-free granola bar, right? Like, and you'd be surprised. And I think we're all guilty of it. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, you know, you look at your listing and you're saying, is my kind of my main value proposition in that front 50 characters? And again, a lot of brands aren't, and it's just a lot of fluff. <laughs> and then, you know, it's, it's in the, it's in starting at character 60, but are people even going to get to that, right? Yeah. Well, what I do is when I'm building the the content, usually I have a template that uh, shows the number of characters in the title. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, we're always looking to stay within 200, uh, but also I have a separate cell that cuts out after 95. So yeah. 95 is the, is the, is where it cuts off, but, it's different for each category, of course. Yep. Um, so what I always tell, tell me what you think about this. What I always try and do is I say, just as you put it, the most important keywords to you, make sure it's within that 95. But also what Amazon does is after the 95th one, they put dot, dot, dot. Make sure that wherever those dots start, you've got either a full word or most of the word so that people get an idea about what it is that this product. So do you do you have tricks like that? Yeah, I mean, I, as long as uh, I mean, it's called so much a trick, but that's a great optimization uh, tip, right? But, and to do that, right? And that's a great, great way to do that. Like something you're doing that in the spreadsheet, right? I can Im imagine the formulas of taking you know, the leftmost 50 characters, whatever, and, and, uh, and having it show in a separate cell so you can see what it looks like. Um, I would say that's the biggest thing is just, you know, you can use either, you know, you can do what we just talked about using like Google sheets, something like that and the spreadsheet and a formula to do that. Or you can just use even like a character count website, you know, that, um, and I actually, there's again, Chrome extension. I have a, I have a zillion Chrome extensions. I think that I have with Chrome, uh, which is why I feel like I need so much RAM on my, on my laptop, but, um, you know, there's even one you can highlight, um, so you can actually highlight all the characters on a page or text on a page, right click and count those characters very quickly and seeing, oh, okay. in my mobile SERP or my desktop SERP, this many characters are showing up for my category, that kind of thing. So yeah. again, the biggest thing is just having that, you know, on mobile, you mentioned 95, uh, as it is in some categories. And it again, depends on the category and that's, there's different types of SERP pages you can be on. Um, but you definitely want to have it in that first 50, I would argue to have, to really have an impact on mobile. Yes, yes. Now, there is one other aspect of the the content and then adjusting it to mobile. So what I always do is if you are creating a listing for the first time, there mm -hmm. is something called canonical URL, as you know. So yep. you, you get that URL created with the keywords that are important to you, then that's going to have a SEO value with Google and, and everything else. Yeah. So there is a special way to do it by using dashes. So anybody who wants to know, just reach out. I'll be happy to share it with you. Uh, but what you want to do then is once you create your listing with that URL that you want, 
change it immediately, the title, because that the, the canonical part is going to take up most of the yeah. space. Yeah. And it's, it's something to do uh, because my clients would say, okay, why do we have to have this when we're creating a listing? When you're creating a listing, that's once in a lifetime opp opportunity. Once yep. it's created, once the ASIN is created, you're done. You're stuck with that URL. Uh, you can change it, but it's very cumbersome. So, uh, but change it after you create the ASIN. So that way you are making use of that 45, 50 characters. Uh, so that way you got the most important keywords. So, uh, because that's what people are looking at, right? It's the main yep. picture. So tell us about the picture a little bit, uh, Ryan. Should the picture be any different? Should it have any other characteristics? From all yeah, I mean, uh, really, you know, a couple things, right? I mean, it's all basic. Obviously, Amazon's very restrictive, and, and people argue with that all the time. Like, you can't do certain things. Obviously, you see people do certain things, certain categories, especially competitive categories, right? And so you can kind of bend the rules a little bit or into that gray zone a bit, obviously, and, and how, what you put in your image. But obviously, it has to be in a white background. You want it, you know, so many pixels, so it's zoomable. If someone does click into the the listing and such, um, but you know, you really want to optimize uh, as much as much of that white space as possible, right? So, um, a couple things, right? Again, we just actually uh, worked with a, you know, we work now with a, a keto group and figured old bar I mentioned um, as an example earlier, and uh, you know, they had a six pack listing, right? And their six pack listing was originally just like their retail store display. If you can imagine the box, like a CVS or a Walgreens, it would be on the shelf that, you know, you pull back the cardboard and someone can reach in and grab one bar, right? That was their main Amazon listing, right? And obviously just doesn't really come across fantastic as like looking at that from a, especially on mobile. I mean, and we actually did it before and after and looked at it and we're, the team were like, oh my gosh, look at this is night, light and, night and day. So it doesn't, uh, it lists a lot of value for the, the, the customer, right? So uh, it was a six pack. Uh, and so what we did is we actually um, lightened or, or kind of uh, lightened six bars of on their wrappers and put them across the image, um, just kind of in the background. So the six bars, which were again, kind of a, a very light shade, all of them were across the background and then across the front or might have been five. And then the six was across, I can't remember, diagonal with an open bar and you could see the actual bar coming out of the wrapper, so you could see the bar. I mean, it was it was such a much better, um, you know, for experience for the end customer, right? Again, if I'm the dad here, busy in the kitchen in the morning trying to buy those bars, I'm in a much more likely click into that listing than I am a listing of maybe a retail box of of, of scrolling past it. Even if it meets, hey, price point looks great, reviews look great. Eh, I don't know this, you know. Uh, it doesn't look like the most, you know, appealing kind of listing. And you only get one shot from the SERP, right? Tip, you know, obviously people can't go back, but like you can only get one shot. So, you know, you don't want someone scrolling past your listing going to the next one. So again, maximizing all that white space, showing again, the, the girl bar one's a great example. Um, even doing things like, uh, you know, changing your, your label if possible, or, um, you know, mocking up a label and having like uh, as much benefit on the label as possible, or even the name, what drives me absolutely crazy or the, the main benefit is like some of these uh, brands will have, uh, not, you know, won't even say what the product is uh, maybe on the label or on the box, whatever it may be on the product. If you, if you can, if it's that type of product, um, you know, cause we deal a lot with CPG. Um, and so the customer needs to kind of see what the name is and see what that value is right there in the packaging. You see some brands do it really well, um, the supplement blends that do it really well is, I mean, it's a good example to look at if you want to see any examples, but like some brands put in big letters there, the name, the benefits, so you can see that right from SERP, right? And you're not having to scan the title, look at everything else. So you're instantly like, ah, yes, that's what it is. And, and literally a second in your head, making you much more likely to click into that listing. Yeah, I, I picked up two things from this and, and I actually one is common sense and the other one is so easy to miss because you're too close to the subject matter. So the, yep. the first one is maximize the white space. So fill that white space with your product as much as possible because the mobile is already small and depending on the kind of phone they have and the screen size, it's already small. And then within that, you have so much width and so much of that width 
is taken up by image, so it's even smaller. So if you are not utilizing most of that white space, it's not, you, you're missing the opportunity. Uh, so that's one. But the second one is so easy to miss because it's your product. And yep. you don't say what the product is on the packaging. Yeah. Yeah. And you, they yep. put taglines and things. I mean, like everybody knows what Nike is, but you're not Nike yet, right? So Yeah, exactly. So putting just do it under it, <laughs> you know, what is that? Just just do what exactly? So Right? So if, if nobody knows the product or not as many people know the product, so it's uh, so easy to miss. And that's, of course, this is not a picture question, but that's what's going to be in the picture, right? So yeah. we design packaging. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, I mean, it's easier said than done, but like, uh, especially if, you know, if you're in a lot of channels, right, you're in retail, you've got all these, you know, you spend a lot of money and yeah, time and resources yeah. already developing packaging, but it's something to look for for the, if you're thinking about redoing your packaging or you're launching a new product or new line, even like have, th think about an e-commerce first and, you know, not just the Amazon, but I mean, Amazon's where the traffic is. So, um, think about an Amazon first mentality of how can we optimize this packaging on Amazon? So there is one other thing, Ryan, I just thought of, because I had a guest a while ago. I can't remember which guest it was, but it was a lady. And she said that in the old days, when products were created, they were created for retail, which meant that they would sit on a shelf and mm -hmm. therefore they had to look good on the shelf. Yep. So that's what the packaging had to be, something that looked good on the shelf. That's no longer the case because when you're selling online, you have pictures and the yeah. picture therefore should not be the packaging pictures. It should be the picture of the product. So uh, that's really what you are talking about when you say, you know, showing the bar instead of putting the six pack that, that pretty much makes the point. So show the product in the picture, not the packaging. That could be an additional picture, just just to, to yeah. show. But uh, you are showcasing the product, and that's the advantage you have with with the web, which is a very subtle approach, but it's a huge game changer, right? Yeah, yeah, and I, I would almost argue that our brains have been rewired because of you know buying e-commerce and and buying things on a mobile device. That would I go into my local low low store right here to buy something. I'm almost looking at the packaging to help, you know, the front face of that bottle or product, whatever it is, to inform me of those kind of same. Is this what I want? Does this have the main value proposition right there in the front of the packaging? So, some again, some brands do that better than others for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, the the next one that I want to discuss a little bit, it I guess it's still part of the content, but I it deserves its own subheading, so to speak. It's the variations, right? So. Let's talk about variations because they look different in mobile. Right, right. So, you know, it may seem like an often overlooked one. I know variations can be a thorn in the side of a lot of brands and sellers, right? Because it can be so difficult sometimes to uh, set them up or change them. You know, you got to use a lot of flat files to do some of that stuff or, you know, um, use use the variation you want for the category you're in. It sometimes can be a challenge as well. But uh, you want to be mindful of that because a couple things with variations, Amazon actually shows the variation uh, name, the, like the style name or the the, uh, the category of the variation within the SERP, right? So again, if you have a, let's use a food item, right? Um, say it's um, a salad, a very you know special self-shaped, stable salad dressing and a plastic bottle and um, you have different flavors of that, right? And if you use, let's say the, you use the pattern variation for some reason and it allowed you to in the grocery category or however you set that up originally, it's going to say uh, option. It says like, I think believe options, colon, pat, you know, patterns or whatever it is. There's some way to delineate that on the, on the mobile cert page. And that may not make sense to an end customer. They may be thinking patterns. Like what is, what is this? You know, it almost confuses. Again, you put yourself in, in a lot of what we do here, expert CPG, you put yourself in that customer journey, that customer mindset of, if they see patterns on different options, uh, then then you're definitely you could be you know lose them right away. They could scroll past you in the SERP, right? Um, the other thing too is sometimes you know they'll put some of those options or those um, depending on kind of what the variation set is, maybe some swatches in the actual 
SERP, right? We've seen that before too. And that's where, again, if, if someone, if you've captured someone's attention from that mobile SERP page, and let's say your, your blueberry flavor shows up on the SERP page, but they're like, oh, I hate blueberries, right? But everything else looks appealing, right? Oh, okay, it's a gluten-free granola bar. And oh, look at this. It's also keto-friendly, has low sugar, whatever it may be, right? It has great reviews, great price point. Boy, I wonder if they have a strawberry, right? So just clicking that listing. And then obviously, um, you know, we can talk about, you know, variations on the, on the main page as well. But, uh, you know, variations show up very differently on uh, in the main page when you're in mobile, I should say, on the, on the product detail page on mobile um, than they would on desktop. So um, utilizing things like swatch images is huge, especially when you get to, um, you know, that, that main detail page on mobile. And we've even had a example of where we've actually used swatch images and a certain uh, variation category for our benefit, right? Uh, we've, we've actually used like little icons, uh, talking about f uh, flavors, right? We've used actual little icons of like a banana or something like that, or, or like a strawberry and the swatch image. And it's much more appealing on mobile, almost like, oh, this is a, you know, it, it, again, I think we, you know, we read or we kind of see with our, with our eyes, and look at pictures first and we do text. Right. And so if I'm just reading, okay, strawberry, blueberry, banana, and going down the list, it doesn't capture me. But if I, I know what a strawberry looks like, I know what a banana looks like, I can see that. And so that's why I really want to take great time and consideration, not only from the SERP, but getting into the detail page of those variations. So again, the type of variations you're using, um, seeing if you can use swatches, not every type of variation allows that, but sometimes you can use a different kind of variation set, um, for your category. So your mileage may vary there, right. And, and it may take some work, but we've seen, uh, have some great results for the pages. As you know, Amazon often loses inventory or overcharges fees with Arty, You can now recover up to 30% of your lost revenue at a monthly flat rate of only $99 with no commission fees for unlimited reimbursements, you can increase your bottom line. Their automated Amazon compliant process ensures hassle-free refunds. Visit www.getarty.com forward slash legends and sign up today to get one month free and discover your recovery potential. Yeah, well, I mean, this is a very fine point. And let, let's dig into this a little bit more. So, because it's not obvious uh, mm -hmm. when you create your listing, if you are not using flat files, you are missing out a lot for stuff. Yep. So do not use the the user interface on Seller Central, login, so create, you know, that's not really the place to do things. So, you, so you've got to use flat files. So in the flat file where the image cells are there is a column called swatch url that's where you put the icon or image whatever you want to have and you have to make sure that something it's going to be small so whatever you pick has to look good when it's small mm -hmm. so it cannot be a, a very detailed big thing uh, it's going to get shrunk to a, a very small size so, so you have to do two things. First of all, you have to put that image up on the web somewhere so that it gets its own URL. And then you have to take that URL and plug it into that, in the flat file, that column called swatch URL. Then instead of sh showing the word as your variation name, it's gonna show that image. Yep, And that's what you are referring to when you say we should use the swatch images that makes a big difference, right? Because people don't like reading. They like to look at colors and yep. pictures and, and things like that. Uh, so can you share with us some swatch pictures that get better results than others? Yeah. So yeah, uh, maybe we think of a few as you were talking there. So, you know, I mentioned already the icons, right? And so those weren't pictures. Those were literally like, like stock image type icons that were all the same style, right? Um, that, that a designer made. And it was, uh, again, like a, a banana and a, I think it, blueberry, I can't remember what the exact flavor names were, but that, that looked very neat. And it was, you know, almost like an animated style kind of thing, right? Uh, another one that we've actually seen before, and I, I thought to our team like, oh, we should maybe leverage that 
was someone actually put uh, in the swatch image, they made a uh, image of just text saying what the count was of the pack size. So it was a six pack and a 12 pack, what have you. And so the swatch image actually just said six pack, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is genius, right? Because again, it shows up much bigger too than just the little text of the, of the, uh, you know, the six pack or the 12 pack in a standard variation set, right? It looks great on mobile. Um, another one, uh, we recently talked to a brand, um, they're in the pet space and they have like these, you know, special towels, you know, for, for dogs that come in wet and muddy. And I have two dogs. So I definitely, I, I definitely understand the need and we have several of those towels and, um, but you know, this, this, uh, brand had all their main images of the, each product were the towel and a dog with the picture in the picture as well. Right. It was a white background and everything, but it, obviously it showed, when it connected, it was a dog towel, right? Not just a towel. And so it was able to show that. However, they didn't do any swatch images. And so for all their little swatch images, especially on the desktop or mobile, you're just seeing like the, the, the picture of the dog and the towel. And so it's even on desktop, it's really hard to view what the actual color is. If someone's, even though you can hover over there or maybe see the text of the color, it's really hard to view what that is. But if I'm just looking it up, you know, seven different options of different colors. I know, oh, perfect. I want the blue one, right? Or, hey, I want the brown one because it's going to match the, the kitchen or whatever it may be, right? So, um, you know, those are two great examples right there of just, you know, maximizing your, um, you know, your your variations. And and like you said, flat files are an excellent way to, to do things. Um, they don't get enough talk probably. And, and you know, I think the the general public or doesn't understand or just the general Amazon sellers understand that how powerful that flat files really can be. Yeah, you know, flat files are, it's, you know, Amazon doesn't make things easy, as you know. So they, they get more and more and more specific uh, templates based mm -hmm. on the category. And and the, the more fragmented they are, the better for Amazon because they can hone in on specific kind of information which does not help because there isn't one answer. Everybody's file is different. But at the end of the day, doesn't matter. Just go download your template from your existing listings, open it up, and inside, just do a search in the whole sheet. Swatch. You're going to end up in one place. It's not in mm -hmm. too many places. So, so that's where they can find but you know, Ryan, where people struggle the most is putting their image up on the web. Yeah. Because putting things in Dropbox and, and other places doesn't work. That doesn't, Amazon does not accept those. So it has to be a, something that is hosted publicly accessible URL for that image. And, uh, you know, that, that's where I'm finding that people just, they think, oh, is this this is a website? How do I put it there? And yeah, yeah. There, there's a great little site that takes a Google Drive URL. They have to make sure you obviously, uh, so you can put your swatches in Google Drive, right? And and make sure that folder, it, put them in a folder. Make sure that folder is set to that the, anyone can view with the link. And there's a website. I think it still works. That uh, and, and that's a risky run with using something like this, but um, where you can actually. Um, it manipulates that Google Drive URL so that it is a like a publicly accessible hosted image that anybody like Amazon can pull up on a swatch image. So that's a great little trick that somebody can find out there as well. Yeah. You know, I have a whole methodology for this. So I, I say this to people. Let's say you are you have a company and and you buy a, a company van and furniture and expensive equipment. So they becomes part of your assets mm -hmm. and they go on the balance sheet, right? Mm -hmm. Because they now have cash value. It's not expense. Except that when something is digital, it doesn't show up anyway, right? <laughs> because it's digital. Except that these are your assets. It's, they are yeah. digital assets. So therefore... They have to have a specific way of managing them. So therefore, I always recommend creating some kind of a register that I call a content register. And, and I log 
every single picture in that and associate it with a skew. And, and then also the way I have it set up is it immediately assigns a URL and all you have to do is you have to put it up on the web and again, you can configure. So uh, I'm happy to share this template and then I, it's a very simple methodology, but I, in a nutshell, I tell people register a separate domain mm -hmm. that becomes the home for your digital assets. So call it blah, blah, uh, assets.com whatever your brand name is, and then just upload them to that place where they immediately get their URL with the image name. And then, you know, you have a list of it and you have it on the web. And to make it even better, just go take that because it becomes a long URL, then take that and turn it into a bit link. So yep. you have a real short version of it and keep it in a register. So, I mean, managing your images, a key, and people usually end up saving the same image with different names. And then before you know it, you think you have 55 different images, but they're all the same. And yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Let's now move on to the A plus content. So tell us what is different about A plus for mobile. Yeah. So, you know, in general, A plus, right. And, and, and you know, most of your listeners, I'm sure know this, right the standard Amazon modules aren't great, right? Well, premium A plus it's much better, right? Which is newer for, for most sellers. But um, when you're talking just a standard A plus page and Amazon's default modules this is what you see with a lot of folks that are starting out new or um, just maybe translating content. Like we see that a lot with brands that are, Hey, we're, we're getting into retail and we need to put our stuff on Amazon. So we're just going to, you know, copy this text, copy this text here from our website, put it in this box, copy this text. And so you've got a, kind of bland looking a plus page, right? When you're using the, just the default modules and, you know, where we see the best results in general is just using those kind of the wide image format and using a bunch of those and then custom creating custom designing images that are more infographic, uh, explainer type images that have the, you know, photography, lifestyle, photography, uh, text overlays, things like that designed in line with the brand, which is what you see as kind of a best practice around Amazon these days. Uh, what's different though on mobile is that sometimes um, those don't all translate well to that small, narrow screen, right? They look great on desktop, but um, sometimes the text becomes just too small that it's not really viewable on mobile. And uh, it just doesn't look great, uh, as good as it could be, I should say. It looks okay. It looks much better than maybe the, the default ones, um, but it doesn't look um, fantastic. So something you can do now is you can actually have a separate mobile A plus page. So use your designer to have just a simply repurpose your existing a plus page and maybe just uh, you know obviously expanding the text making it larger size maybe you have to obviously remove some things move some things around but really just reformatting that a plus page so it looks really sharp on mobile so again you want to convey if someone's going that far down your listing again putting your your head to in the, putting yourself in the customer's shoes right and they're the ones that have, okay they found you on serp they've clicked through They've made it all the way down. If they're all the way down to your A plus page, because remember on mobile, again, look at how your listing looks on mobile, is that the A plus page is like halfway down that page, right? Amazon now shows all the alternate images now. And then they show, I think, the, the they used to show the product description first, then the bullets. Obviously, you have A plus, you don't have the product description. So those may show up differently, but you might get the bullets first, then the A plus. If they're all the way down to the A plus page at that point, that's really your time to keep, you know. Like close the deal, like really make sure you're getting solidifying your main points and addressing maybe any other, other questions they might have about your product, you know, what its value proposition is, why they should buy it, right? So conveying all that stuff in that A plus page, right? And and doing that again, optimizing a separate mobile one so they can read it, right? Because if, if, if you're putting great content in there, but it's just your standard desktop A plus page, then they're not going to see the difference potentially and and actually, okay, what does that text say? I can't see that and just scroll right through or the worst thing is back up out to that SERP. So that's just a, a quick, you know, thing that can be done as well is just having a separate mobile A plus page that would render differently for, for folks that are, you know, looking at mobile. Yeah. I mean, I did this definitely creating, so you're going to have two different versions of the A plus page. One is for desktop, one is for mobile. And mm -hmm. this is for standard A plus as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And premium A plus, they already have different versions, but
but for standard A plus, th this is this is a big deal because A plus is where you can you you have no restrictions. You can put pictures, you can put text or whatever. But that's a that's a first very valuable tip is definitely use an A plus for the mobile version, uh, design one, and then also a lot of people put text in images. Mm -hmm. Make sure those images show the text big enough and if not mm -hmm. then use a different version in uh, in mobile yeah this is a uh, it's a big deal because people are looking at the a plus page they, they they're not reading they're not reading stuff right. they're looking at pictures and that's an a plus and, they, and they're just skimming really right they're just like their eyes are just kind of like you know it's kind of skimming things so you really got to call the main things out so you'll have to eliminate some things from your standard a plus but the most important stuff should be on there okay so the last thing that I want to cover, which is my really where everything comes out, is mm -hmm. what are the data points that you are monitoring? What are you looking at? And and where is where can you find that data? What's important? Yeah. So, you know, just like anything with Amazon and data, it's kind of a, a sore subject. I'm sure for you as Nick, you know, you probably feel it more than anybody. Right. But like, it's like, you know, we, we know Amazon has all this data, right. We'd love to get as much of it as we can, but we can only take what we can get. Right. We can sit here and complain all day, but we got to deal with what we've got. So, you know, the biggest thing that I think everybody should do just as a good exercise is going to your business reports and actually seeing what your breakdown is between mobile and desktop. Right. So in Seller Central, you can go to business reports and you can see that. Just make sure if you don't see them by default, uh, it's kind of, again, hidden. Amazon does some the UI on Amazon. Seller Central is not always the greatest. There's, I think, a little uh, collapsible menu that slides in from the, the right. And you can select if you don't see like those, um, the diff difference between mobile and desktop. You may have to select that uh, when you're looking at those business reports. But then you're going to see a breakdown of mobile and desktop. You might have to ex download that into a spreadsheet. And again, export to get the actual percentages, right? Um, which again, not very user friendly or intuitive, but you, something you should just do anyway. Um, would be really interesting to see too, if, you, if you've been on Amazon for a while, I can't remember the exact, Nick, you probably know, I can't remember the exact time range that business reports go back in time. I want to say it's like three years now. Um, but it'd be interesting just to go back as far as you can and grab like the same month from three years ago, right? If we're look, talking about December, 2023, the holiday season, right? And you go back to December 2020 or December 2019, however far back you can go on business reports, if it, it's broken out historically there too, I'm, I'm curious, you know, in, in seeing what your, maybe what your breakdown was then, if, if have it's changed, right? So have everybody do that, right? Because you'd be surprised on how, you know, how many people are looking at things on mobile and buying things on mobile. So that's a big indicator of how important this mobile view is. And that customer journey on mobile is really important. And, um, you know, another thing you can kind of do with that data is you can use that to um, segment your different products and your different product lines. Because you can, again, you could have a more of a consumable type product that's a lower price point that has a very high mobile session rate, right? But you could have, let's say, a, a more expensive product, a thousand dollar, you know, home sauna, let's say, and that could be more desktop oriented because you know people aren't necessarily going to buy maybe that type of purchase from their phone laying in bed, right? They might be, oh, let me look at this at work tomorrow. You know, when I'm in front of the computer or something like that and do a little more research on it. So just keep that in mind as well is that different products and product lines are going to have different mobile sessions. But again, on average, we're seeing like 60 plus percent of purchases happen on a mobile device, which tells you like, okay, this is that serious where we're going to be viewing just mobile. Um, the other thing when it comes to data is uh, the, the biggest thing that we've we've been doing for a lot of our clients is split testing, right? And we talked about the two, you know, and, and now with brand registry, right? And brand registry just has grown to this, but he, all the benefits of brand registry has grown to this behemoth on, on the last, you know, three or four years of what you can do with it. But now they have the manage your experiment section, right? And so we talked about the two pieces of content, the title and the main image, and you can split test those. You can actually have an A-B test run um, and, and change, you know, you can change, we talk about the title, putting that in the first 50 characters, your main value proposition, right. And test a, a main image, your current one versus your new one. Right. Um, and then the data, Amazon, unfortunately gives you like certain, you can't see like all the data of how the test ran, but there is like, uh, I think it's sales from search is one of the, is the name of one of the 
data points. And that tells you right there, like uh, over a long enough time period, right? Like the test run, but you know, that tells you right there that which one is more mobile appealing, because in my opinion, if most of your, you know, it's just a numbers game. If most of your sessions are coming from mobile, right. And you have more sales from search, but the variant, the new variant you've done, that's more mobile friendly. Then that tells you right there that that that's going to yield more results, right? So uh, more click-throughs and obviously hopefully more sales, right? So um, that's another thing that brands can do and sellers can do is really take a look at and seeing, okay, what can we test? And really, in my opinion, you should always be testing. Like there's no reason not to, you know, not to test different things. Um, you know, uh, it could just be a wild idea uh, or it could be something that's just the best practice that you need to run. So, uh, and see if it works for your product. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I, a while ago, I had a guest and, and he was saying that he's always test. When one test finishes, then you get the winner, make that permanent, and then you start testing another one. And then you mm -hmm. just keep getting better and better. So um, as far as the data, two years, business reports. The one that I like is detailed page. I go to sales and traffic report, detailed page, sales and traffic, at child ASIN level. That's the one yes. I like. And then I, you can go back to precisely two years. So today, as we record mm. this, January 9th, 2024, you can go back to 2022, January uh, 9th, uh, 10th, one or the other. So so that's, it. that's what happens. So this is one of the challenges. You have to keep downloading and storing and analyzing your data in perspective, mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. downloading for a time frame and looking at it doesn't mean anything. Uh, you need to be looking at it in perspective so that you can see the the changes. So uh, yeah, I mean uh, this is great. Now, as it happens, just before I we started our recording today, I was having a conversation with another gentleman. Uh, he was saying that mobile is obviously growing. And the general feeling is half the sales come from mobile. And he was saying that in their case, they were still getting 80% of their sales from desktop. And then he said, what I don't know is people may be searching in mobile, but mm -hmm. complete purchase on desktop. There is no data to show. What is that? Uh, but the other thing is, don't believe the generic numbers. You have to look at your own skew by skew because yep. some items are more suitable for people over the age of 40. And people over the age of 40, they like to do business on their computer. They don't really like to, they, they can't, most people are eyesight problem, you know, with the mobile, it's smaller, right? And and I myself can, and I've been using computers all my life, I cannot stand typing on my mobile mm -hmm. because you always get the wrong letter. So it depends on your product. Yeah. So don't buy into the generics. Business reports, very good idea to look at and, and look at year over year, month over month, so you can see how much of the traffic is coming from uh, mobile and uh, do it skew by skew. So that way, you know where to put, how to prioritize your content, so to speak. Yeah, yeah exactly. great conversation, Ryan. This is uh, very valuable. Okay, so we've come to my favorite part of the show. The, what some of my guests call the therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we get to know you. I introduced you as a, a former banker. So mm -hmm. tell us, uh, how, how does a banker get into Amazon in the first place and then end up running an agency? Yeah, great question. Um, and the term banker, you know, that that's a very uh, broad term. So I was maybe a little different banker than what people are thinking. I wasn't like a, a investment banker on Wall Street. I was literally working in retail banking right out of college um, in the suburbs of Chicago. I, I grew up, born and raised in Illinois, and um, and I worked in a, a retail bank branch. Right, started with just consumer banking, 
And then I, I moved into my last kind of four or five years there at the bank where uh, just in small business banking, because I had always wanted to be an entrepreneur, right? I'd, uh, since I was a kid, I, I wasn't being an entrepreneur and I, I just hadn't found my, my path yet, right. To do that. So I was able to kind of feed that drive, frankly, by working with these small business owners. And, you know, I, you know, I covered about nine branches there at the end and I, I would get to just meet with clients at their business. And, you know, there were obviously like your standard businesses, like there might be a doctor's office or, um, like a, like a medical billing company or something like that. But then there'd be like this really cool stuff of being like, Oh, you do that. Like, this is, this is the business, right? This is really neat. And so, um, back in, you know, 2012, 2013, one of the clients I managed was, uh, was an e-commerce company and they sold a lot online, but they did most, uh, they just started, they just started using fulfilled by Amazon, which we all know is FBA. And at that time it kind of just started opening up to, um, sellers, right. And, and being more uh, widely available. And I remember even reading an article in the Wall Street Journal about it. And I, I referenced that to the clients. Like, yeah, our FBA sales, it's, it's crazy, right? People want people want that prime badge. And so I started looking and I'd always been, been big technology, being into Amazon and um, I was a big Amazon customer. So I started looking at selling on Amazon, right? And I, I, I started, you know, this, this is a very hot time for retail arbitrage at that time. So I started looking into that and I started, I, I dipped my toe in that water and I, I would find myself, you know, stopping my lunch break at a local uh, you know, target and clearing the shelves of all kinds of clearance merchandise and staying up late at night, packing boxes, uh, and doing that. So, uh, that was how I got my start with Amazon is just selling stuff, right. And just learning the platform that way. And that's obviously the best way a lot of us can learn is just learn by doing it. Right. And, um, and then fast forward, you know, I, 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 I told the story, I took my wife out for a nice dinner and I said, I think I want to try this Amazon thing full time. And I was just so unfulfilled, I guess, and banking would be the right way to say it. And so I took the leap and, and started doing that and, um, you know, started kind of retail arbitrage. And obviously everyone knows the, the ins and outs of that business and how intensive it can be and competitive it can be. And, uh, then started following these, these brands that it's like, I found this brand. It's like, wow, this brand has a lot of potential. I, I love the branding. I love the packaging, but oh my gosh, their Amazon listing is a mess. So, uh, you know, I spent, I think it's two hours on the phone with the first brand I talked to. And, and obviously I knew how to kind of talk with business owners. I've been doing that. Um, in my banking days. So, uh, you know, that's kind of where it started shifting from, okay, I, I really like this part of it. I'm just working with these different brands. And um, that's where it's kind of the agency uh, aspect grew out of it. And, and that's exclusively what we do today. That's all we do today is we work with brands and, and helping them reach more customers on Amazon. So I heard you say you always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Why yeah. was that? Oh, that's a great question. Now you really put me in the therapy seat. Um, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I just, uh, the, I, I think I like being in control. Right. And, and that's, a uh, we, everybody says that a lot, you know, you're, you're kind of a control freak, whatever, but I like controlling my own destiny too. Um, I'll tell the story of, I usually don't tell this part of the story, but like, I remember sitting, we'd had these every six months or so we had these sales conferences for for the bank. And we would go up to this this golf course, beautiful golf course in Wisconsin, and we'd we'd rent the clubhouse out for the day, and we'd and people would get awards. We'd talk about initiatives, blah blah blah. And I remember just looking around the rooms a couple of times, you know. And I was in my, gosh, I was in my maybe early thirties at this point, right? And so I was like, well, I don't want to. You know, looking around the room, there's people that have been here 20, 30 years. Great for them, right? And 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 you know, and I'm like, I this I can't this can't be me, right? I and I knew. If I looked back on that moment, especially the moment when I I saw, you know, leaving the bank and and doing pursuing Amazon full time as an opportunity, I knew if I didn't take that moment at that point in my life, I would just I would regret it for the rest of my life. So, um, yeah, I just I just wanted to control my own destiny. I guess would be the best way to describe it. Do, do you have other entrepreneurs in the family? Uh, no, my, my parents both, uh, you know, worked. My dad worked in in you know county government for for most of his. Uh, professional life. Uh, my mom dabbled in different things here and there, um, doing like home parties and things like that. Um, but um, not not a real strong entrepreneurial family. Um, and again, I think part of it too is just uh, you know I'm a classic. You know we run you know EOS. We always use the term visionary a lot. And um, you know I'm a classic visionary. So I see something. I see the opportunity. You know to me, I'm the you know everything's a nail and I'm the hammer. Right. I'm like oh, okay, this could be the thing and this could be the thing. And so that's what I always kind of looked at especially looking at these brands, right. Um, of seeing like what they could be doing, right. Of like, wow, great product, great branding. 
Amazon's a mess, right? And so we see that a lot still with the clients we work with, but that's where we love to jump in and help. So your dad working in government, uh, was that something that he was happy about or he wanted to be doing something different? That's a great question. I don't know. I'll have to go back and ask him. I mean, I think he was happy with it. You know, he enjoyed the the service aspect of it. So, um, he he's always enjoyed service. So I think he, he enjoyed that part of it. But um, I can't speak for my dad. And again, I go back and I'll go back and ask him that. But like, um, I think at some point, a lot of people. I don't want to speak for everyone, but they get to a point in their life where they look back and say, and they look around and they say, "How did I get here? Right? <laughs> How did I get here? You know." with, with X number of kids and this house and, and, and maybe married to this person, you know, it's just, you know, in this job, right. Whatever it may be. And it's just looking back and, um, a kind of a, an internal mantra of mine or, uh, kind of a, a, let's say a rule I live by, but like, I, I kind of want to live life by my regrets. And what I mean by that is like, I, I don't want to regret something. I don't, I don't want to, um, look back on it and say, Oh, I had that opportunity or I should have done that. And, and that kind of thing. So, you know, um, you know, so that's why I kind of, I live life by, by not wanting to have regrets, I guess would be the best way to say it. Well, the reason I asked about your dad was because I thought, because you know how it is as a kid, you, you are re- listening to your parents, yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. And they are at that point, they are venting about what happened during the day. And so I was wondering if, if your dad was like complaining about not being able to make his own decisions and being mm. able to. So maybe uh, I wonder if you subliminally, you know, started to develop this thing that, you know, I don't want to be told what to do because, you know, as yeah. entrepreneurs, yeah. we are unemployable, right? So exactly, exactly. And I, I think that's where, I think that's also where it, I, it came from too, especially as accelerated, you know, and maybe working at the bank, it's like, you know, we always can see a better way as entrepreneurs, we always see a better way to do things. Right. And, um, and that's what's so hard is working in like corporate America, uh, working for a company and, and you're told what to do is like, it's like, no, we shouldn't do that. We should do this. So this is the way we should do it. And you can obviously only do that for so long before you become a benefit to that company or corporation. Then you just become a nuisance because you're always complaining or, or saying it's not good enough. We should be doing it this way. So, you know, eventually that falls on deaf ears, especially in large corporations, right? Because nobody wants to rock the boat too much. And it's like, you know what, I just want to, I just want to write my own destiny, right? And every day is my, my day to make it or not, right? So I, I like that choice. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, uh, it's always the case. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's like, in my case, my, there was no business person in the family. My mm-hmm. parents were doctors, everybody in my family, mother's side, father's side, all doctors. And I grew up listening to my father always telling me, don't be a doctor, don't be a doctor, even though he was a good doctor. And then my mother loved the the, the work and she wanted me to be a doctor. So it was always a conflict. Uh, so, you know, you are always influenced by your parents maybe sometimes not directly, but by seeing their own experiences. And then of course they try, they are either agreeing or conflicting with who you are. And yeah. but you don't know that as a kid growing up and then somewhere down the road, suddenly life turns out to be what you were influenced by what you've brought up, you've been brought up with. So uh, yeah. I, I, I like to go back and analyze you know, where was the moment that that pushed me in this direction or that direction? Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, great conversation. Uh, so, Ryan, yeah. so tell us, uh, how can people reach you, share your contact information with us? Sure, yeah. Uh, you know, they can find me on, on LinkedIn under, you know, Ryan Flynn, F-L-Y-N-N. The company name is Expert CPG Commerce. Uh, you can find us at expertcpg.com. And again, we work with, uh, you know, food, beverage, CPG brands, and helping them reach more customers in Amazon and beyond. Um, and, you know, yeah, so if anyone's interested, they can um, check us out at expertcpg.com. And yeah, but LinkedIn is a, is a great way to find me as well. Great. I'm sure they'll reach out. And by the way, you're not related to Errol Flynn, are you? I am not. No, no. I don't know if that'd be a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm not. No. 
<laughs> great. Thank you for being here, Ryan. Uh, great conversation. Thank you for all the info. All right. Thank you, Nick. Have a great day. Before you go, make sure to sign up with Arti and claim your lost revenue. Visit www.getarty.com forward slash legends to register. You will get one month free and experience Arty's features. Sign up now at www.getarty.com forward slash legends. Thank you. And this brings us to the end of another episode. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the episode and share it with someone you think would benefit from it too.